working on peacock feathers today. Uh, this is uh, navy blue canvas fabric um, from the fabric store where they uh, sell fabric for outdoors. Um, I used one of these uh, clover uh, marking pencils that's uh, white. Uh, it's great for dark fabric. When you, when you draw the line, at first it doesn't look like anything's going to show up. And uh, after it dries for a second, that's when it shows up. Uh, and that comes right out with water. Uh, so I drew that on there. I have uh, Coates and Clark uh, machine quilting thread uh, variegated in the machine. Um, that's a uh, 9014 uh, needle. Uh, a generic uh, walking f uh, quilting foot, um, but I have bent the uh, little arm at the top so it doesn't hop uh, because that drives me crazy, but it does give enough pressure to make the stitching happen. Uh, so uh, this uh, particular treadle machine is a Singer. Uh, model 66. This one's from the 20s, early 20s. And uh, when I uh, when I'm doing these uh, these lines, I'm actually to make them stand out more and get more color. I'm stitching over each section at least twice. So. I'm not going real fast because I really want to stay on my lines and uh, if, I, if I get going too fast I tend to miss where I'm headed. The uh, backing I'm using is plain old muslin, and the batting is, uh, let's see, uh, soft and bright, I think is the, the one it's called. It's, the, it's a polyester version from the Warm Company, and I think that's it, soft and bright. Anyway, it's a nice dense batting. That works well for this. Now, this is going to be a tote bag, so I want the finished product to be real stiff. So, a real dense batting and a heavy top fabric works well for that purpose. So, that's why I'm using canvas. And that and because it'll be nice and durable. And that's why I like a real thick, dense batting. I've also used cotton. Uh, I've done some of these with uh, Nature's Touch uh, cotton batting, which I like. I've used uh, Warm and Natural. But I find for these that the polyester is the one I prefer the most. And you may notice I'm really not being totally accurate following my lines. Uh, I make adjustments as I go. Uh, and uh, so. The lines are, are nice to have as a guide, but I'm not going to follow them exactly. And again, they're going to wash out, so it won't matter. Now, after I get all this variegated purple done, the background will be filled entirely with small pebbles. And that 
is done with. This is a Coates and Clark uh, embroidery thread, and uh, it works really good for that portion of it. The the end result being, it'll look sort of like this. Uh, so this is one that I did um, for the other side of the bag. On this one, I used solid purple instead of variegated, and I thought it'd be nice to have a little variety so that the the reverse side will be in the, in the variegated thread. And now that I'm seeing how much better contrast I'm getting with that, I may in fact go back over this one time around with that variegated to brighten it up even more. Um, so that's that's what I'm up to. This will again, this will turn into a turn into a tote bag. This one will have uh, this color green. Uh, for the handles, uh, so I think it ought to be kind of bright and pretty. Now you can see the back is uh, uh, plain old muslin. The bag will get lined so that backing fabric, that muslin, won't show. I'll use a I'll use a nice coordinating colored quilt fabric as the lining. I'll put some pockets in it. And it'll have a zipper closure. So we'll have a nice uh, functional bag. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> the rest of it's more of the same. But uh, one of the things that is really interesting, I find, on, on these uh, bags, I uh, did a couple with this basic pattern, a little different, but peacock feather type, uh, on denim. And uh, the denim, you think of as dark blue, but it really isn't nearly as dark as this dark navy is. And uh, this thread, and this contrast makes it show up so much more. It's a totally different look uh, depending on the fabric. So sometimes you just you, you can't tell how much brightness and contrast you're going to get until you actually stitch it in. Because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that it would be so much more uh, standing out so much more uh, on this than it was on blue denim, but it really does make a difference. So um, the contrast between the fabric and the thread really is going to affect how bright your threads look. Uh, once they're stitched into here, it looks way brighter than it does just on the roll uh, because of the contrast. So uh, often I think the best way to pick out your thread is to really hold it up to that fabric and uh, even uh, put in a few test stitches to really get a feel for how it's going to look. But it really does make a big difference in how much the design stands out. Since this is just a solid piece, uh, rather than being a piece like a quilt, uh, the, uh, the design itself, the quilting itself, is really what makes the design. So you really do want your stitching to show. You can see that the way I have this foot set up by bending that lever, you can see basically that what it's doing is just gliding over the top of the fabric. It's not bouncing up and down the way it's designed. I find for this, 
it's actually like quite a bit easier to uh, not have it jump them up and down. The other thing that's uh, good for me about this foot is it's easier for me to see. It's got a fairly big opening in it, and it's easier for me to see where I'm going and follow my lines and see where the other stitching is. And when I go back to do the filling in of the background, that's when it's really important to be able to see because there's so much, there's so little space between these pieces of the feathers, and I have to go back in and quilt all in between that. And so it's really important to be able to see where I'm going. I have some other feet that uh, work great, but for real detailed work, it's harder to see because the opening is smaller. I really like if I can get my thread tails untangled from it. I really like this style, but the opening is smaller and it's harder for me to get a view of what's happening right in there. And uh, this one is uh, made by Singer, specifically for a Singer 66 machine, and it's great, but the opening is really tiny and so it's very hard to see inside there. Uh, so I, uh, I switch back and forth and a different fabric behaves differently with a different foot. And uh, so I keep several of them next to the machine and as I, as I work on different projects, I may find that one is gonna give me a better stitch than others. So I do change out and try the different feet to see which one's going to perform the best. So I think it's nice to have a couple of different options. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, with this machine, the best results I get are when I have the bobbin thread and the top thread are matching. Uh, it certainly doesn't have to match the color, but it should be the same thread, the exact same brand, the same thickness. It's easier to get a good balanced stitch that way. If I, uh, a lot of uh, people use a, uh, uh, a different thread for the, for the bobbin, a thinner, uh, less expensive thread. And uh, on, this, on, on these old machines, it just works better to have the same weight and kind of thread on the top and the bottom. Uh, so, uh, and this kind of quilting takes a ton of thread. So that may be a drawback for some people to using one of these old machines, but um, that's how I get the best results anyway, is, is with matching my top and bottom threads. And every time you switch thread to a different brand, uh, a different size, you're probably going to have to do some adjusting on the tension. And uh, the same with different fabric. So always expect when you start a new project that you may need to spend some time working on getting that tension adjusted. And you want to look at the top, the stitches on the top and the bottom of the piece. And theoretically, they should match. And if they match, then you've got good tension. Weird. It's probably either your tension or that you're moving the fabric faster than the machine is moving. And what happens then is you get sort of spidery looking uh, stitches on the back uh, 
where things are sort of stretched out. And the only thing I can tell you there is practice will tell you how to adjust that. Because if you don't have, if you have an old machine like this, there's no stitch regulator. So stitch regulation happens by how fast uh, you're moving your hands, and uh, in this case, how also how fast I'm moving my foot to make that treadle go. thing they'll do is grab the uh, the hand wheel uh, and you can't sit out of frame right now but they'll have to turn the wheel to get the machine going but uh, I can do all that with my feet and that just comes from practice and a lot of people have told me that they get uh, they get the machine started and they can't do it. Everything they, they do makes it go backwards. And again, that's, that's just a matter of learning how to operate that foot pedal on the treadle to, I just ran out of bobbin threads, so I'm done uh, for now. So anyway, it's just a matter of practice, learning whether you should push forward or push back to get the, um, the machine to go in the direction that you want it to. And, uh, you know, if, if I'm with the needle in this position, if I tilt my foot back this way, it'll go down. If I push it this way, it goes up. And you can just um, look out uh, the corner of your eye at the wheel and see what's happening and learn to adjust. But anyway, that comes with practice. And there's no there's nothing wrong with grabbing the hand wheel and turning it towards you. I'm going to reload uh, my bobbin and finish up uh, the quilting on this. And uh, uh, at some point, I think I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you how I'm going to do the, uh, uh, the green in the background. And we'll see how that goes. Happy quilting. I'm working on the filling in parts now. And uh, same machine setup. Uh, this thread is thinner, so I had to adjust my tension. And I'm just making little teeny tiny circles and filling in all the spaces between. And what happens is that color contrast actually makes everything stand out even more. And I'm doing these circles very small here in the middle and in between. And as I go up to the edges and the spaces, uh, the bigger blue spaces, I'll make them larger. But in here, to make it make them fit, I really have to do them quite small. This could also be done with a, more of a little meandering stitch, but I like the circles. That's 
It's easy to lose track of where you're headed uh, because the the spaces are small, and, and it, it, the tendency is to be is going to be to uh, want to you know get lost and end up filling in a space that's supposed to be empty and doing the you know getting off track. So you have to pay attention to the to the gaps that you're supposed to fill in and stay out of the ones that you're not. It's, uh, This part takes a long time. And depending on the look you're going for, you certainly you wouldn't need to do this part. Because I think it's pretty enough without, without the green in it at all. So you could just do the, the feathers and call it good. I have a tendency to, um, when I'm doing these bags, I like them to be really, really heavily quilted. And uh, again, that's because it stiffens it up and actually adds some more stability to the sides of the bag. If you wanted to do less quilting, you certainly could. And if you still want it to be stiff, you can add a, uh, uh, a heavy interfacing. And that would certainly add stiffness to it. Anyway, this is the way I do it. Just lots and lots of little circles and squiggles to fill it all in and then <clears throat> again as I get up to the edges and more open spaces the, uh, the circles can be larger planning on doing this kind of intensive quilting, be prepared to use a lot of thread. So when you, uh, when you figure out what you need and how much it's going to cost, figure that you might need if you're doing this much quilting you might need close to a thousand yards of thread Anyway, that's the, uh, uh, the filling in part, and the rest of it's more of the same until the whole entire thing is full. So, happy quilting.